All right, finally making this video. All right, everybody's been wanting to know, how do you do it? So we're gonna talk about that right now. Welcome back everybody to My Tom Films and Project Integra Type Bar. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to import a JDM car into the United States legally. So many people have been hitting me up and asking me, okay, so how do you import the car? What's the process like? How much does it cost? I'm going to specifically talk about the export process from Japan and locating the car and contacting an exporter all in this video. And then we're gonna make a separate video on the import process. So having the car shipped and getting it titled and registered. So with that out of the way, here we go. First, you need to find a car. Where do you get your car from? So I originally contacted Pacific Coast Auto to get a car from auction. But the thing about auction cars is once you have it, okay, now you have, you have to find a place to put it. And Pacific Coast Auto doesn't offer storage. And the only way to really import a car and save on the costs is by importing the car a few years before it becomes USA import legal, which is 25 years. So a car needs to be 25 years old, calendar, calendar years, so it has to be exactly 25 years old from the day it was manufactured, and that's when, it, that's when it can come into the United States. So you need to find a car that's legal, and you need to find a place to store it if you want to buy it before it becomes legal. That's what I did. The reason why I did this is because, well, if you look at prices now of uh, Integra Type Wars, they're like 20 grand, and I definitely did not pay 20 grand for this car. I don't have money like that. So what I did was I contacted Garage Defend, which is a uh, Nissan Skyline GTR uh, performance shop that also has like a subsidiary company called JDM Global that does all the exporting to foreign countries run by Destan. So he handles all of that and they have like a performance shop where they store cars and I guess uh, I guess it's like a dealership. I, I'm not 100% sure on what exactly it is, but I heard of it on YouTube through Tommy Effie. So that's, that's the guy I heard it from. And I saw that he was doing business with him. And I'm like, okay, well, if he's doing business with like a, a YouTuber with over 100,000 views, then chances are it's a pretty legit shop. Um, so I reached out to him originally, and I remember not getting a message. So I reached out to him again on like two or three different forms of social media to really get his attention and eventually he messaged me back on Facebook and that's how I got in contact with Garage Defend from there. I let him know I was really serious, I had money, you know, I was ready to buy a car. I was so ready to buy the car. So I contacted him and he let me know like how everything works. So uh, he said, I can look for a car for you or you can, um, you know, you can buy one from auction. But he said, cars from the auction uh, generally have mechanical problems and cosmetic problems uh, and there's like fees associated with that uh, for cars in the auction but at the time back in 2019 uh, cars on auction that were Integra Type R's were selling for like three to five grand back in 2019 these cars had problems they had like you know accident damage they had oil leaks um, but for three to five thousand dollars <laughs> I mean, it's an Integra Type R, so how much more expensive can it get, right? Uh, but he kind of told me not to, not to deal with that. So uh, I did some research and I was browsing on the internet and trying to figure out where I can find a database to buy cars. There's this database called gunet.com, link right here. And you go here and you can search for cars all across Japan um, that are sold at like used car dealerships. So it's kind of like Auto Trader for Japan, basically, um, but for used cars. And there's so many cars out there. Right now, I think there's probably about 50, about 40 to 50 Integra Type Rs being sold right now in Japan. In all of Japan, only about 40 or 50 Integra Type Rs. That's not a lot, guys. <laughs> there was originally like 24,000, 25,000 of these, well, let's be real here, 30,000 um, Integra Type Rs ever made in Japan. So the fact that there's only 40 or 50 left, kind of scary. So you have to go on this website and from here, it gets a little tricky because 
you, you have a company that's selling car and everything's in Japanese, so you're going to have to use Google Chrome if you don't speak Japanese and translate the page. Um, and you have to look uh, at, the, at the price of the car. So if you want to buy a car, you have to uh, tell the Stan or tell your exporter, whoever you go through. I recommend uh, Garage Defend because you know he speaks English and it's a pretty straightforward process with him. Um, but you, you basically send him that link and he will then go buy the car for you. Now you want to avoid, here's a pro tip, you want to avoid cars that are being sold in Hokkaido, which is like northern Japan where it snows a lot. You want to avoid cars in Okinawa, which is like an island and usually there's a lot of salt water that kicks up and it rusts the cars that way. And then you want to avoid any cars that are like in Kyushu, which is also like another island that I really wouldn't buy a car from because, again, that, that water really does damage to cars. And I've seen this on many, many cars across Gunet. Nobody talks about this anywhere else on YouTube. Remember that. You should thank me later for that because this is serious. Like, not, not many people know about Japan and, and the geography and like where you should buy cars from, but I bought this car actually from Tokyo. Uh, but it's originally from Ibaraki, which is like north of Tokyo, so like maybe about maybe about 30 minutes to an hour north of Tokyo. It's kind of like near Scuba Circuit, if you guys know where that is. Um, so this car I knew was good. No rust. I never, like I've never seen the undercarriage of this car uh, when I was purchasing it, but I recently looked under it and guess what? There's, there's really no rust at all. So that's why I got it. So now that you have this this idea of where to get cars from, now you have to put two and two together. You have to get your exporter and you have to get uh, your, your seller of the car and you have to figure out how they're going to get this car for you. So you have to basically give your exporter money. Here's the point where you gotta give him money because he has, he has to go get the car for you and bring it back. So there's gonna be taxes associated with this GUNET fee. So on GUNET, um, you pay for the car, but on top of that, you have to pay Japanese taxes for the car because you're not the one buying the car necessarily, but your exporter is. So when your exporter goes to get the car for you, he is basically like acting as the seller or the buyer of the car. So all of the fees are going to be paid and it's not going to be like two or three dollars. It's going to be a little bit of money. I paid like about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in just Japanese taxes for this car when the Stan purchased it. So like there's like a prefectural fee, so which is basically a state, so a state fee. So when you buy a car in Japan, um, if you buy a car in a different state, they charge you money just for that. It's crazy, right? I'll actually put up the invoice right here if you guys can see of what my invoice looked like. And you're not going to be able to understand it unless you speak Japanese. But um, that's, that's what I was charged on top of the fees that I paid for this car. So now you've got your car, it's sitting in a lot somewhere because now you're storing the car. Uh, storage can be done through Garage Defend. So uh, basically what happens is you buy the car, you pay for the price of the car plus fees. Uh, you pay for like a, a storage fee, depending on how long or how, you know, how long it has to be stored in a lot. You can store it indoor or outdoor. I recommend outdoor because it's so cheap, under $100 a month. And you pay for the export fee. Those three things are what you're going to have to pay. So now you wait. That's pretty much it. That's all you have to do if you want to import or if you want to export a car from Japan. You follow those steps and everything will be explained in the next video, which will be about how to actually import the car into the United States, which is the more intricate part, I think. It's a little more difficult. So that's where I'm gonna cut the video today, guys. I hope you learned something new, and uh, don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe bell for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.